见到食物有一种记忆的吗？ No matter how busy or preoccupied you are, there will be a kind of food that has the power to stop you in your tracks and take you right back to your childhood. This is especially true in Macau, whose cuisine is nothing less than an edible chronicle of the vicissitudes of history. Here in the bustling kitchens, cooks and chefs dedicate themselves to creating classic dishes. To many citizens, these dishes represent the taste of home. Time zones, it seems, exist even in the same city. It's 5 a.m. While the city soundly sleeps, the fishermen have already weighed anchor. They want to catch more. They want to catch more fish. 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 30 year old Quan Ho In has been going to sea with his father and grandfather for 16 years. Even though they're all experienced fishermen, they're not sure about their catch today. As the fishing boats head for offshore pastures, Haksa, one of Macau's oldest Hakka villages, wakes to the sound of birds and the fragrance of flowers, away from the urban hustle and bustle. A few hundred meters away, on a hillside, Ang Kun Chung is looking for a plant. Evodia lepta is a common ingredient in the herbal tea of Guangdong. But today, Ang Kun Chung is going to use it to make a traditional dish. Although modern utensils have replaced traditional mortars, the refreshingly bitter citrus aroma of Evodia lepta remains the same. The procedure of mixing the juice with glutinous rice flour is a fun game for Ang Kun Chung's granddaughter. Oh, Fresh banana leaves are also used as containers for another Hakka dessert, a classic formula comprising crushed peanuts, coconut shreds, and sugar. Two sweet treats originally made only on special occasions are now ready to serve. This is one of the many legacies of the Hakka people found in today's Macau. While Ang Kun Chung's family are still enjoying their breakfast, the Quans have reached the Wan Shan fishery, a place with abundant marine resources. A vessel like this is called a prawn boat by locals. The cantilevers on both sides can cover a width of 40 meters and drag 18 nets simultaneously. They are used exclusively for catching shrimps and crabs. <laughs> Nowadays, it is rare to see young people like Quan Ho In working as fishermen. Fishing used to be a pillar of Macau's economy, with more than 2,000 fishing boats in the 1950s. Now, the total number of fishing boats is less than 100.
the fresh catches will be delivered to seafood markets early the next morning. At present, about 40% of products in Macau's seafood markets come from local fishing boats. In Macau, the cooking methods used for seafood vary greatly. The mud crab, common in the Pearl River estuary, is an ingredient familiar to Macau chefs. Shortly after a mud crab molts, its meat hasn't taken shape and its body is full of juice. Locals call a mud crab in this stage of growth a water crab. A virgin crab has just reached its adulthood and is rich in both roe and meat. Congee, cooked for four hours, will become yet more delectable with a dash of crab juice. The luxurious crab congee with water crab, roe crab and virgin crab in one pot integrates all flavors of the mud crab in every stage of life. There's a Cantonese style of cooking that really brings out the taste of virgin crabs. Garlic laid at the bottom and fine salt that dries and hardens into a crust on top help produce a firmer meat texture than simply steaming. Passion igniting rosolio intensifies its aroma and appeal. The silver pomfret from the South China Sea is given a peculiar smoky aroma by tea leaves, raw rice and walnut pith. The ingredients used to give the fish its signature smokiness are sourced from all over the world, a truly inclusive dish. Seafood can also be used together with dried tangerine peel to give duck an extra flavorful tang. After six hours of cooking, the aroma of tangerine, the freshness of abalone and the richness of duck meat are blended to create a true delicacy. The making of seafood in Haksa village still follows traditional practices. Repeated hard blows release myosin in the fish fibers to produce gelatin. Not far away in Shunde, Guangdong province, dace cakes were made in the same way 150 years ago. Lok Van Tak is the convener of a village banquet. He is very familiar with Cantonese cuisines. Tonight is the birthday party of Lok Van Tak and one of his friends. Nearly 100 guests are invited. Together, they enjoy the elaborately prepared delicacies and celebrate the occasion. Time, like a mirror, can always reflect the most youthful memories on a hardship-enduring face. In Macau, you could always see the origin of the city through a dining table. In the old streets, it is a bowl of tong sui, or sweet soup, that brings back childhood memories for many. The crisp and sweet water chestnut can be transformed into a classic sweet soup by Yu Yamlin. 
And in this process, one thing is crucial. Since the 1960s, Macau's water supply system has been connected to Zhuhai in Guangdong. Several reservoirs built along the Xijiang River bring about 270,000 tons of clean water every day to Macau, which is short of freshwater resources. The incoming water supports the functioning of the city and the people's daily lives, not least the catering sector. Yu Yam Lim's shop has been there for half a century. No matter how the ingredients change, water is always fundamental to creating a smooth and sweet soup. Before monosodium glutamate came along, stock was the most powerful flavor weapon in the cook's war on blandness. When the water-soluble protein of the meat is dissolved in water, stock is produced to impart flavor to other ingredients. Simple ingredients like bok choy from Jiangmen in Guangdong can be transformed by the power of stock into something utterly delicious. The practice of adding tofu skin to congee was introduced by Leong Hung Yu's father, who was also Sung Kei's founder. The protein of soybean dissolves in the congee, enhancing its taste and fragrance. By serving congee and several kinds of dim sum, the restaurant has been running for over a century. Macau's history is also revealed by the locals' everyday life. Patane Market, next to a wharf, is where Sun Quan Sing, a retired Cantonese chef, visits every day. Every Cantonese chef has his or her own secret recipe. Even with something as ordinary as soy sauce, their versatility is endless. 100 Cantonese chefs would somehow manage to use it in 100 different ways. Cantonese accounts for 80% of Macau's population, most of whose ancestors migrated from various parts of Guangdong. The composition of the population means that the foundation of Macau cuisine is Cantonese cuisine. Sun Quan Sing has his own knack for turning waste food into treasure. But taking out the inner membrane of a fish bladder requires skill and patience. Extracting bones from a duck's flipper is even more challenging than processing fish bladders. Only with precision and control can the skin be kept complete. After being simmered for 30 minutes, the skin becomes perfectly crunchy. Then it will be stir-fried for 20 seconds with fish bladder and chicken liver and make a dish rarely seen in restaurants since Sun Quan Sing's retirement. Sun Quan Sing has long been devoted to traditional Cantonese cuisines. Spiny head croaker is no longer than a palm. 
so it poses considerable challenges to the cook's cutting and slicing skills. After taking the succulent part off, the flake has to be sliced again to increase its width. Then sausage and crab meat are curled in to enrich its flavor. The spiny head croaker should be cooked on a well-controlled fire. After frying for 50 seconds, they are stir-fried for 8 seconds before being dished out. The result is tender, savory fish rolls that are welcomed by the city's younger generations. Cantonese cuisine specialists are known for meticulosity and patience. These qualities are especially to be seen in Guangdong's Shunde cuisine, which has also taken root in Macau. Grass carp, one of the four major aquacultured fishes in China, is also one of the most common ingredients in Shunde. The key to cooking grass carp is getting rid of the fishy smell. For this purpose, the carp is fried first to seal in the fresh flavor. Once that's done, it's ready to be steamed with scallion and ginger. For a long time, nearby Macau was the place Shunde chefs flocked to, to make a name for themselves. As a result, Shunde cuisine became known to more and more people. For the fish soup, Che Hoi Sam uses an entire dace, while grass carp bones are used for the stock. Then, in with some grass carp floss, and the fresh, thick soup is ready almost ready. One last essential ingredient is still missing. The best olive kernels in China come from Zhengcheng in Guangzhou. Every year after the mid-autumn festival comes the black olive harvest season. Shishan black olive has been cultivated here for more than 400 years. In Dungshan village, every family has a tree climbing master. They spend at least 10 hours a day on the trees during the two month picking season. To process the black olive, the water temperature should be kept at around 70 degrees Celsius. After stirring and soaking for five minutes, the olives are softened, making it easier to remove the cores. By twisting and pulling a cotton thread tied to a basket, the villagers can open an olive and remove the cores. This craft has been passed down through the generations in Dengshan village. The rooftops of many houses in the village are used to dry the cores and flesh of olives. After about four days, they open the cores to take out the kernels. As they do, the air becomes thick with a delightful piney nutty aroma. Hey, 
Black olive, after being soaked in hot water, has a texture similar to sweet potato. White sugar or soy sauce with grated ginger will make it even more seductive. The flesh of the olives also have their use. Pressed and cured for weeks with fine salt, they are transformed into a commonly used ingredient in Cantonese cuisine. Following in the steps of the Cantonese chefs, these pickled olives have also made their way to Macau. Ho Man Tsui has modified the cooking process of a steamed fish ingredient unique to Cantonese cuisine. While in the traditional formula, olive flesh and fermented black soybeans are simply fried together in oil. Ho Man Tsui adds a touch of his own pickled pepper and hot chili. Salmon, rich in oil, can stimulate the flavor of olive and soybean sauce. Coupled with fig and lotus leaves, the dish acquires a refreshing and sweet aroma. Based on traditional Cantonese cuisine, Ho Man Tsui has created a unique style of cooking by combining conventional flavors and local ingredients. For example, gelatin-rich prawns caught by Macau fishermen can be mixed with minced pork, water chestnuts, olive kernels and pickled olive. Pig's call can both maintain the shape of a dish and add to its fragrance. This dish is inspired by the Teochew meat roll and traditional sweet and sour pork. Macau's unique cuisine has thus been developed by the younger generations innovating on the basis of inherited tradition. In Taipa, Macau, there is a century-old shrimp paste shop. For many Cantonese chefs, its owner, 91-year-old Paolo, is nothing less than a culinary legend. His handmade shrimp paste, unparalleled and indispensable. Paolo has always followed traditional methods by mixing new shrimp paste with the batch produced six months earlier and churning repeatedly to blend. An aromatic, nostalgic taste is produced. Streaky pork with shrimp paste is a home-cooked favorite for many. The thickness of the paste and the refreshing zing of the cooking wine lend the pork a special new twist. Now the traditional shrimp paste has been introduced to Beijing by an established Cantonese chef. These conches might look big, but 800 grams will yield just 200 grams of meat. 
Each slice is no thicker than two millimeters. After being braised in clear chicken soup, it's ready for the dressing. Hot oil and ginger juice tame the strong smell of the paste and meanwhile creating a pleasant appetizing aroma. So it is that in this new era, the Macau taste is making an impact on dining tables thousands of miles away. Reminiscing about the past, Paolo is still as energetic as he ever was. Regardless of his nine decades, he's still in his prime. By 6 a.m., Macau's meat markets are already buzzing. Truckloads of fresh pork has come through customs from the Chinese mainland. As usual, Lo Camp Wei saves his best meat for a regular customer. This simple backstreet shop, so anonymous that it even lacks a signboard, is a gastronomic mecca in the eyes of many Macanese. Mark Lam, who started working with his father when he was 14, has been in the shop for more than 50 years. The habit of cooking char siu, or roasted pork, with the front shoulder blade, which is rich in intermuscular fat, has never changed. Marinating pork with ingredients such as sugar, salt, liquor, sesame paste and soy sauce is a recipe known throughout the industry. But the food in this little shop has a magic touch that makes diners queue up for more than an hour under the scorching sun. Char Siu, one of Macau's most popular delicacies, has taken deep roots in the local diet. Whether spit roasted or oven roasted, the essence of roasting is heating meat over fire. But heat and timing is everything, something that experienced cooks know all about. When the meat is almost ready, heat needs to go up to crisp up the skin. Once that's done, the meat comes out and is dressed with maltos. All the elements for exquisitely preparing salty, sweet char siu are now in place. At 
11.30 a.m., the shop opens right on time, and the couple are soon up to their elbows in work. They only sell smoked trotters, char siu and soy sauce chicken. The three kinds of food sold separately or in combination, plus four woks of rice, are all there is on the menu. Clanging the flat of the cleaver serves a dual purpose. It sets the pace for Mac Lam's busy lunchtime service and signals to hungry customers that he's open for business. Tough existence? The expression on the owner's wife's face tells you everything you need to know. <laughs> Amid the clattering of the knife, the three hours always fly by. In the shop, there are many ancient gadgets. This is Mark Lamb's collection. Standing in silence, each piece represents a period of time. In Macau, history is not a synonym for cliché. Rather, it is the foundation of inheritance. Pastry is one of Macau's most famous specialities. This is a bakery with a history of 120 years. Though they still adhere to the old handmade tradition, the current owner of the shop bears a youthful face. Tedman Ko is the only one here that is able to make the oldest kind of cake. The key technique in making this cake is kneading the dough. It should be kneaded for no more than five minutes, so it won't stiffen. This requires strength and experience. Historically, light cake was a snack Macau fishermen always had when they went to sea. It might look plain, but that doesn't mean it's easy to make. 
好像一种赞美一样，就是我做到了。Building on past practices, the pastry industry in Macau is being modernized. Koi K producing 300,000 almond cakes each day, and with over 300 pastry products developed, accounts for 70% of the market share in Macau and reflects the development of the city. In fast-moving Macau, there are always people adjusting their pace to catch up with the city's new rhythms. Just like every superhero has his superpower, Chun Ying Hap has his secret weapon. The loaf is about to be filled with spicy curry beef. Never following the beaten track, Chun Ying Hap calls his self-invented cuisine ingenious. He started off making Portuguese cuisine in 1981 and Cantonese cuisine in 1985. He has kept updating his menu since he opened his own restaurant 30 years ago. A large number of tourists come to Macau after its return to China. Chun Ying Hap and his ingenious cuisine quickly became popular with tourists. Chun Ying Ha prepares to cook a famous Cantonese dish, wax gourd soup. Naturally, he uses his secret weapon to put cabbage into the wax gourd. The combination of dried shrimp, ribs and dried oysters comes from years of experience in blending flavors. With Chun Ying Hap, the time spent at a dinner table is never boring. We Chan Wai Leung is talking about the roasting techniques he inherited from his family. Roasted meat, or siu mei in Cantonese, is another aspect of Macau's heritage. Thanks to modern machinery, this factory can provide siu mei throughout the year. On New Year or festivals, it can produce three tons of siu mei per day, serving 70% of restaurants in Macau. The roast duck craft that Chan Wei Leung has inherited is a distinguished one. 
the spice passed down from his family and quality black pepper integrate Western and Chinese flavors, producing a novel mouthfeel. Unlike some roasted products that use soy sauce to enhance their color, the color of roasted duck comes entirely from the Maillard reaction between sugared skin and fire. Roasted duck with black pepper has a reddish color and a light spicy aroma. They will be delivered within 10 minutes to ensure the duck remains crisp skinned and plump with delicious juices. It is difficult to cater to all tastes, but in Macau, that doesn't seem to be much of an issue. Thanks to the mobility of people, foods from all over China have met and integrated in Macau. Instead of being elbowed out in Macau, dumplings from northern China gained a foothold. The popularity began 15 years ago, thanks to mainland immigrants. Since 2006, the hotel has never stopped promoting the flavor of Shanghai. Smoked egg with tea leaf is a classic Shanghai dish. The yolk of the smoked egg is only the beginning of a feast. Braised pork leg the grand finale dish in a Shanghai New Year's Eve family dinner is another representative of strong oil and sauce creation. When seasoning, only dark soy sauce is used so as to produce a dark color. As a final step, the mixture of colloid-rich stock, cornstarch and water is poured onto the dish. This is the palatable braised pork leg. Whatever the weather, Tam Kwok Fung can be found waiting at the entrance of the hotel's storeroom for a new batch of ingredients. In the 15 years he's been in Macau, this has been his unbreakable custom. 我覺得身為中餐的廚師,其實最重要都還是要成全為一保留翻我們粵菜或者中餐的一些老的味道。In Tam Kwok Fung's opinion, it is also a kind of inheritance to continue the tradition of Cantonese cuisine based on Chinese and foreign ingredients and even to recreate the ancient Cantonese cuisine with modern combinations. In the attempt to make a classic dish, he takes out an accidentally found ingredient. Ingredients, 
飲食文化嘅多樣性咧嘅叫做包容性咧都比較大。This is a dried skin of speckled hind. Its value is beyond measure because of its rareness. At the age of 17, Tam Kwok Fung was able to prepare dried food for a 100-table banquet and knew the technique for soaking. 要靜落嚟，唔可以心急，要令到佢自然去浸發，用水熱水嘅交替去泡發咧，膠質可以保存得更加好。Starting from the skin, Tam Kwok Fung will prepare an elaborate dish. Drawing inspiration from a lost dish, Kunlung Abalone, Tam Kwok Fung gives full play to the role of stock in imparting flavor. Stock made with soaked dried abalone induces the fresh flavor from the fish skin. Moreover, Tam Kwok Fung incorporates a wide range of ingredients such as deer sinew, shaddock peel and Japanese kelp, showcasing his ingenuity and innovation. If you need to define gourmet food, Tam Kwok Fung's answer is the pursuit of perfection. The pursuit of taste is all that counts. Not technique for its own sake. 我覺得復原呢一道老菜，其實對於美食係個技術嘅傳承。Every day in Macau's culinary world, there are new creations taking place. And history being made. <laughs> they will keep shaping the city's taste, and maybe one day become part of its culture. But at the core of innovation is the roots of Chinese tradition and the original taste of home.